So welcome again to another uh, session of, of onboarding our uh, new sponsors. I'm really happy to be here today with Nick Denning, the CEO of Diagesis. Welcome, Nick. Thank you very much indeed, Kai. Uh, pleasure, pleasure to be here. So I think we have a, a particularly interesting discussion today ahead of us, taking us all the way from ancient IT prehistory to emerging trends in um, security and and uh, uh, migration and stuff. So, so why don't we start by the ancient prehistory? One of our commonalities is that we both founded companies in 1987. So, can you tell us a bit about the history prior to you then much later founding uh, Diagesis? Certainly. Uh, so, I was a soldier my first career. Uh, I, when I left the army, I went to work for Logica, which was one of the leading system houses, and my field marshal's baton was still in its knapsack at Logica. It was the brilliant time uh, with Mrs. Thatcher trying to in, inspire commercial activity, and I, um, I set up my uh, first company. Um, I set it up as a personal services company, so it was just me. Took the same salary out as I had at Logica. Uh, and then invested the fees back in growing the company. And we very quickly became one of the leading uh, consultancy providers uh, around the Ingress database. And it was the old Ingress and Oracle of VHS, of B B B Max and VHS, Oracle One. But we had a very busy time throughout the 90s during the Computer Associates, um, uh, Computer Associates uh, ownership. Uh, the we couldn't uh, Ingress wouldn't scale, so we got involved in middleware technology, um, in particular Tuxedo. Then uh, Bill, Ed, and Al bought Tuxedo uh, and formed BEA and made their uh, killing. And then Oracle bought BEA, and now Oracle, are, of course, the enemy. Um, and we were using Tuxedo with Ingress in particular, uh, so that was a challenge. So we then started working with IBM. And got involved in that uh, in the uh, replace FTP challenges of the late 90s because so many FTP um, systems were failing and banks were misdeclaring their profits by tens or hundreds of millions. And that led us into analytics. But at all that time, we were never. We, we had to sell the company every month. We had to keep selling services every month. We had no product that would keep us, uh, keep working while we were sleeping. And we developed, after a lot of consideration, we developed a risk management system. Uh, our first deal over a million dollars was to Lockheed Martin to support the Joint Strike Fighter, the X-35 as was. And that led us to flotation on AIM uh, and, uh, Went, all went pretty well. And then all of a sudden, I found myself out of a job. Like, uh, uh, happens to lots of founders. You think it will never happen to you. You think you've got your finger on the pulse, but it did. And that's when I formed Diagesis in, 90, in 2008. 2008. Okay. So, so uh, many of our uh, viewers won't know much about Ingress and, and uh, Computer Associates and those things, but you said it was a kind of a VHS Betamax uh, uh, setting together with Oracle. So now Ingress uh, as a database, like any database that has ever been big, is, is not going away all that quickly. So can you tell us now about what Ingress uh, uh, in practice means for diagesis? Certainly. So back in the day, uh, in places like Ireland, they were so hacked off with the abuse from organizations that happened to begin with a no, but no names, no pack drill. And so they insisted uh, that all Irish government projects must have either, 50% of them must have Oracle and 50% at least must have Ingress. So, and that was writ large across UK governments without quite the same um, grit, but still a, a very large number of English projects across government. And, the, and so once you get into these very large systems and you've got millions of lines of code, it's actually very difficult to, uh, to change, to move from one database to the other particularly in the in the scenario of ingress which not as well as the database which is very good was very good is very good it also has its own development tools and they were very effective and very efficient in their day 
but to move from those tools requires a effectively a translation of the code and that is a huge job it might be a rewriting of the code that's an even bigger job because if you've had a system that's been running for 25 years and how many hundreds of man years of work has gone into that and who has forgotten all the requirements and so we have seen so many disasters where people have converted the system entire system uh, and the and only at the last minute as they're trying to finish porting their data they suddenly realize it's not going to work the data model has changed the business rules are such they cannot get the old data in so the challenges of migration are pretty significant but we've been around for a long time and that's one of the areas where we are now um very very experienced whether it's an upgrade just upgrade of the operating system then an up or an upgrade of ingress or a change to another database or a complete replacement with another platform we have got strategies for dealing with all those scenarios so so we'll soon move into into maria db and what how you you are engaging in maria db but i will do a jump start because you were mentioning now the woes of doing a migration and then you suddenly realize that no it cannot be migrated at all so um, in the case of MariaDB and migrations of Oracle database, there's a particularly clever solution in uh, the form of actually sort of not doing the migration at all, not doing any migration of the underlying application because um, the underlying application is just pointed instead of Oracle database to MariaDB, which can use all of the uh, characteristics of, of Oracle in the Oracle mode, including the stored, the PLSQL stored procedure. So I understand from you that this has been contemplated also for ingress, but uh, it's difficult and also the, 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 the user base uh, isn't as big. So can you shed a bit of light on, on what that would entail and, and whether or not it's, imp it's possible? Certainly. So the problem is not so much the SQL, or the stored procedures, uh, it, the problem with Ingress is that the code has not been written in Java or um, predominantly not in C, uh, so not in an open source language, not in a portable language. It's been written in Ingress tools. And with those Ingress tools, you've got to have an Ingress database to manage the Ingress tools because the code is stored in the Ingress database repository. So you the the uh, so to so you've got to rewrite all the code as well whereas in a using any database system where you're just using a database even if there are bits that are in the database those are uh the 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 task then is just to find the sequel and update the sequel so hopefully all organizations have regression test harnesses so <laughs> yes, exactly. But hopefully they do. Or and the ability to work with a customer to design and implement a regression test on this is not a philosophically complex thing. It just takes it takes time and money, but it's it's e easy to do. So you um, you uh, if you're trying to do this, that that the sort that sort of migration, the first bit is you set up a regression test harness. You replace the. Uh, ingress ODBC or JDBC or whatever drivers with the ones for MariaDB and you now run the application exactly as is uh, see if you get any errors reported by the error system and then work out how to compare the database changes or the database the data in the database um, as, as a beginning and, and a begin, start and end comparisons sometimes that can be straightforward sometimes it can be a bit of a pig uh, there are all sorts of ways where we can do things like that. Um, uh, uh, too long to go into at the moment, but uh, we've documented a number of strategies that deal with that. And so particularly, so all, uh, most of the databases that want to do encourage people to get off Oracle have implemented a form of uh, Oracle compatibility. The MariaDB um, looks to us as if it's got the closest uh, Oracle compatibility in terms of the uh, not just the SQL, but also the PL1 code. Um, so, uh, so 
I'll, I'll leave you to cut this bit out in the end. What was I going to say? Okay, so then then I can continue. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, I was the one sort of uh, jump starting this Maria DB question a bit by go d- diving into a detail related to uh, migration. But can you now tell us because you were mentioning. Uh, mostly ingress stuff and other things. Where did Maria de B come into the equation for diegesis? Okay, so we started diegesis in 2008, and we were still in the IBM camp. Uh, we'd done a lot of really great work with IBM technology. We knew WebSphere inside out. It's a bit of exaggeration, but we knew Web's pretty well. Uh, and therefore, by implication, we knew all the IBM tools because they were all sitting on WebSphere. And so we were building some pretty critical um, multi-level secure systems for uh, for government departments. If you were doing work in government departments as a new startup, you can't talk about the work you've been doing. Uh, so you can't market it. So uh, so as that project wound down, uh, we found it pretty difficult to win new work. Uh, so we were we were bumping along the bottom a little bit um, until about 2013, 14, when we started to start to bring in new project again as our sales engine got going. And one of the projects was for a battlefield communications software project. Uh, uh, written in Java and to support MOD, and because of that, we had to get, we had to sign up to the new security standard, Cyber Essentials, and we we passed the Cyber Essentials assessment. But for my sins, uh, I changed the policies to make sure we complied, but I didn't actually put the policies into place. So uh, my first return was a uh, was a statement of ambition, not a fact. And I thought, how many people have got the same challenge? Mm. And wouldn't it be neat to build a solution where you could define your information security policy, make sure that your information security policy matches, or you can link it to the standards, so you can see which standards you are complying with and by how much and what the delta is that you need to do to be fully compliant with Cyber Essentials, IASME Assured, uh, ISO 27001, all those standards. But we wanted this to be a solution that we might want to sell to every single SME in the country. So if we were going to sell it to every single SME in the country, there's no point forcing them to have to pay 250 grand worth of IBM, DB2, WebSphere, blah, blah, blah. So we needed to build it on open source. And, sorry, excuse me. We needed to build it on open source. We looked around and MariaDB looked like the best database uh, available. Uh, It was really neat at the time. Version five was automatically delivered as part of a Red Hat Linux anyway. So it's a very easy. Um, uh, 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 it was a very easy uh, start. Uh, as for, as what has actually happened is instead of in, uh, instead of supplying an on-prem version, the world has moved on, and fairly quickly we went to an AWS platform. So the fact that we might be deploying hundreds of thousands of instances. Uh, of the software uh, across the world hasn't actually materialized but that was that was a key factor in uh, in looking to open source databases plus of course the cost of our development environment so okay. we start we start i'm uh, sorry okay so so uh, that explains how you uh, picked up mariadb servers and now you are a sponsor of mariadb foundation so What's your vision there? I understand that you, you you don't have an absolutely clear answer to what exactly you expect, but you have a clear direction. So this would be more or less my concluding question uh, for for this interview. What is your intention and ambition with uh, Maria Levy Foundation? So what we are doing. So with uh, it is probably best to start with the, um, the ambition of the business, and the ambition of the business is we are. Ingress, we are an Ingress house. Regretfully, Ingress customers are so fed up that they want to get off Ingress as quickly as they can, but it's a really big uh, ask for them. Otherwise, they've done it years ago. So given that customers want to get off 
We've got the customers we are supporting. We want to help the customers achieve the outcomes they want. And therefore, our mission is to help customers to get off Ingress and onto MariaDB. And we've developed tools to do that. And if, if we are destroying our business, so we have to be really cute about building another business around MariaDB. And but everybody's on the same bandwagon. Uh, MariaDB is, so what have we got that's different? What are we going to do that's different that will mark us out as unique? And what we are very interested in doing is looking at the data. We'll do systems of record. We're really good at designing high-performance systems, whether it's massive P-series or as economic as you can get on a small four-core AWS EC2 thing. Uh, we're good at data. Everybody's got to have an AI play, but the, it is amazing how many AI disaster projects there have been that haven't delivered. So we are trying to work out how to make AI deliver by looking at the data first and looking for, looking for possible outcomes that AI can help with. And we're also incredibly interested in the GIS element. Uh, GIS is a, it, it sits in its box and uh, and it's very good for planet, doing the planning permission for where you're going to build houses and looking at the floodplains and the pollution overlays. But I think there's so much more in terms of analytics of, uh, of, the, of the analytics around the normal everyday things we do, driving, uh, working out where we can communicate, and the combination of AI, GIS, and data looks to us to be really, really interesting. So we've got to grow, uh, we've got to grow another data, data um, professional services database business around MariaDB. And so that's the main thread of what we're doing. And then we want to build the layers of capability on top of it. So to answer your actual question, we want to be experts in MariaDB. And to be the experts in MariaDB, we've got to make a contribution to going into the working foundation, earning the right to really get under the hood of MariaDB. We'd like to make a contribution um, to, uh, to for people to come and invest, for, for, for our people to come in and get involved in working on an open source project. Uh, and therefore, they will, by dint, be even better at their jobs and that will therefore win the um, respect of the commercial MariaDB organization. So hopefully we will create a virtuous circle of doing well in each box and therefore doing really well overall. That's a wonderful um, uh, ambition level and, and I think a very pragmatic one, the attitude that, 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 that you show. So we're ha absolutely uh, happy to support you in that journey. So any final concluding words uh, for our viewers, Nick? Kai, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm very pleased that we're going on the right lines. I think it would be... Uh, we want, we, in the spirit of the open source piece, we want to share our successes. We want to help other people who have similar problems uh, to the ones we are helping our customers solve. And if you can come to us and engage us to do some work with you, that would be tremendous. If we can help push the boat along on wherever you are, we're happy to make a contribution. Nick Danley, uh, Diegesis, thanks a lot. Very valuable. Thank you. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB Server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.